our world and our lives have changed. Yet in the midst of all this change, our mission, our vision, and our calling remain the same. Greenville Oaks remains focused on the mission to inspire people to follow Jesus because we're convinced that following Jesus is the best way of life possible. We want to be a church that not only cares for our members, but also cares about our community because this mission and vision is larger than our building. So we're rolling out our new community focus. This is not just a response to the pandemic, but is our long-term initiative for serving our community. It's called for Collin County. So we invite you to join us this March as we truly step out of our church to be a church that is for Collin County. Let's all step out of our comfort zones and into our communities. Let's be a church that truly loves our neighbors, has an impact on our cities, and loves all people for Christ. Let's be a church for Collin County. Well, if you were around in March, then you hopefully remember the Four Collin County initiative that we launched. It was one of the, the coolest things I think we have done as a church in, in, a, in a long time. And for those of you that weren't around, it was a, a month dedicated to focus on leaving the building and going and being the church, truly being what God has called us to be in our community, in our neighborhoods, where we live and work and, and play. And we had a time in which some resources were made available and people went out to go and serve and love and bless people and families and individuals and organizations. And uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And then we spent a, an entire Sunday worship service just celebrating story after story after story about what God had done in and through situations and circumstances. And it was a really cool time. But I stood here on this stage back in, in March and said, this is not going to be a one-time thing. This is not going to be an annual thing. This is not going to be a uh, once a year for a few weeks. This is going to become who we are as a church. This is who the Greenville Oaks Church of Christ has been called to be, to go and be the church, to be a community of faith that loves its neighbors, that is there to serve those in need and to walk with and care for our friends and the people who live in Collin County. And that's what we're doing. We have also been involved in projects regarding Ukraine and uh, the refugees, both uh, in, in Poland and different areas where they have, they have congregated, as well as those who have come to the United States with special collections and special offerings. There's all kinds of, of efforts that have happened internationally, but this is an example of what's also been happening here in Collin County, the fill a bag, feed a child program in which we just finished collecting over 200 bags of food. Each one of these bags represents a child. This is not a bag of food. This is a child who's going to have food that they were identified through their school program here in Allen that would be in jeopardy of not having food during the summer because they're a part of a special uh, food program at their school. These are kids that are going to be fed. When everybody was talking about things that they were against, things that they were opposed to, things that they were in opposition of, we said, we just want to be a church that's for something. We want to be known as a church that is for our community, that is for our neighbors. We want to reflect the love of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're trying to be. So this morning's uh, title, the theme for this morning is Keep It Going for Collin County. Because I was serious when I said I don't want March to be a once a month annual thing. I want this to become the culture and the life of who we are as the Greenville Oaks Church of Christ. So we're going to celebrate a really cool initiative in which we're able to feed a lot of kids who are in need. But then we're also going to be launching the next initiative because we're not done. Because we're going to keep doing this. We're not going to stop. So I want to invite the Williams family to come up and join me. And I've got a really, really cool story that I want to share with you about 
uh, one of our families here at Greenville Oaks. Carson and Sharon and Caden and Catherine and Evan. Come on up, come on up. Church, if you'll welcome the Williams family, please. All right, so let me share with you a little bit of the background and then we'll get right to it. These three kids, excluding mom and dad, these three kids on their own did a really cool thing that I was told about by Samantha Campbell, our children's minister. And when I heard about it, I said, man, I've got to share this with the church. It's too, too awesome of a thing not to share with you guys. So, um, Catherine, do you want to start? Do you want to share with me how this idea came about, what you guys actually did? Do you mind sharing? Tell me what you did. What did you guys do? Uh, we did a lemonade stand. You did a lemonade stand. Okay. And what did you do within a lemonade stand? What did you, what did you make? What did you? We made pink lemonade and yellow lemonade, and we had cookies, brownies, and cornbread muffins, and cupcakes. Okay, so you made all this stuff, and you wanted to go and sell it at a stand. Was it in your, in your front yard, in driveway, in driveway. front of your house, in front of your house? Okay, okay. So you had this idea to do a lemonade stand, but tell me why. Why did you do this? Because we wanted to help kids in need. You wanted to help kids in need because of what we were doing here? Okay, all right. So you had this idea, you wanted to do something to help some kids in need. I got it? Okay, all right, pass this down. Caden, will you tell me exactly what happened? You guys made these brownies and cookies and muffins and made the lemonade, and then you set up a table in your front yard, is that correct? Uh, kinda. Okay, well then you can, you can correct me. Yeah. So tell me what you did. So we made a list of what we needed, and we made signs, we cooked some stuff, and we bought some stuff from the store. All right, so you cooked some stuff, bought some stuff, you made some signs, then you set up the table in the front yard. Yeah. Okay, and then what happened when you set it up? Uh, some customers. Oh, you had customers? Yeah. yeah. About how many people came? Uh, probably over 200. Over 200 people came to your lemonade stand. That's more than most businesses get in a day. So, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with, uh, with those numbers. Okay, so, <clears throat> so people started coming. How did they hear about the lemonade stand? Do you know? Uh, some was on Facebook. Some, they just, like, saw the signs. Were they neighbors, like, in your neighborhood? Yeah, and some, they would come from 20 or 30 minutes away because they saw it on Facebook. So they drove 20 or 30 minutes away from where you live just to come to your lemonade stand. Really? All right, who was the very first customer? Our teacher. Your teacher from school? Your teacher from school. She was the very first one. She heard about it and she came. I love it. I love it. Okay, so you had a, you had a bunch of customers. You sold a bunch of lemonade, a bunch of cookies, muffins. How much money did you actually make? Over $500. Over $500? That's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so you made 500 bucks, then you went and you guys bought some video games and some new clothes and cool stuff like that? No? All right, Catherine, tell me what you guys did with the money. Uh, we collected food for the food bags. You collected food for the, so did you go to the stores and, and like buy the food? And store. You went to the store, okay. I think there's a picture of it back here. So this was the living room for a while. Uh, Sharon didn't have to clean because there was no way you're cleaning up all the macaroni and cheese in that living room. So you, you got all the food, and then you packed it up into bags, right? Like this? About how many bags? Uh, like over 40 bags. <laughs> over 40 bags. Just you guys, from your lemonade stand, you helped feed 40 kids in our community. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, so proud of you. <clears throat> so proud of you. Carson, can I ask you a question just from, from a dad perspective? Kind of tell me... Tell me what your thoughts are on this whole thing. You, you know, I think it's a testament to God's wisdom and the plan he sets for us as a father, right? And so as a father, it's exciting to see how this sort of foundation establishes, you know, a pursuit of altruism and service to others, right? And I think that's the foundation that leads him into the people that are going to become. So it's, yeah. it's really exciting to see yeah. that. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> I think it's so... 
think it's so cool. Um, you know, Sharon, one of the things that I loved that you shared with me was that you didn't have a didn't have a grandparent who came and wrote a big check and kind of made it all look good. And it was, you know, that there was a lot of people that just dropped by and gave a few bucks here and wanted to get me, and they just kept hearing about it, just kept wanting to stop by and just help however they could, right? Yes, it was, um, it was just really neat to see the community and other people come. You know, we had said we would do it from maybe like 8 to 11 because it's over 100 degrees, it's hot. <laughs> and um, people kept coming, so we kept selling, and we ended up being out there, well, not we, the kids. Yes. Until like 3 or 4, and there was... Yeah, it was mostly the kids. Mostly the kids. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was refilling the... I, the yes, absolutely. Anyways, absolutely. Um, but it was just, it was neat that, and there were even several people who came by on bikes or just driving by, and they didn't have money, so we, you know, the kids' idea was to just go ahead and give them lemonade yeah. anyways, and several of them would come back and yeah. bring a few dollars, and it was just, it was really sweet to see that it was a lot of people yeah. coming, and we had some out-of-town people Venmo, and it was just, it was really sweet how they all kind of work together. And I love it. So I love it. it I, I am, I'm grateful. Let me, for, let me just say this. I want you guys to know we're super proud of you, proud of what you did, but more importantly, proud of why you did it why you did it because you wanted to make a difference and help people and I think it's super cool I'm very proud of you and as a church we're very proud of you and I hope you keep doing it do more lemonade stands keep doing really cool stuff to make a difference okay all right I'm yeah go ahead absolutely yeah thank you thank you guys I you know I shared a couple weeks ago uh, uh, a friend little friend of mine named Caden one of our uh, one of our four-year-old little boys who brought a bag of money and gave it to his Bible class teacher, Mr. Al Stewart. And, um, and I shared with you this, and I continue to be reminded of that this morning, and that is the future of the church is in good hands. God is doing incredible things in the lives of our kids and our young families, and I'm really, really proud. And I'm not so sure that we as the grown-ups don't need to pay a little more attention to what our kids and what our teenagers are doing uh, because they are making an impact without us. And I love that. I love it. Really proud of them. And, and thankful to you guys for all the food that was brought. Like I said, over 200 bags of food in all are going to be given out next week throughout our community to, to children and to families and um, truly making an impact. So thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so that was exciting that we did that. And we're going to get rid of all this food next week. And the stage is going to be empty. And we're going to shift to the next thing the next initiative, the next opportunity for us to be a church for Collin County. So I'm going to invite uh, some more friends of mine, Woody and Tim. If you guys would come on up, Tim Woodbridge and Woody Dunlop are going to come up and share with you a very exciting opportunity because, like I said, we're going to keep doing this. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep finding needs in our community and finding a way as a community of faith and as a church to respond. All right, Tim, we'll start with you. Uh, would you mind sharing with me a little bit about how your Connect group uh, got involved in, or groups, people got involved in uh, the initial backpack and school supply program, and we'll go from there. Okay, sure. <clears throat> so I credit where credit is due. Uh, this congregation for many years has uh, helped out uh, Boyd, a Title I school over here, in various causes, and so several years ago uh, one of the efforts that uh, was put together was to help with school supplies and uh, I believe it was the the wood small group at that time small groups kind of morph over time but I think it was the woods decided to help out with that and uh, add some backpacks and do a little more with that um, I think they started out maybe or originally 30 40 maybe 50 backpacks or something like that putting in from the school list, the actual supplies that all of the kids would need, the pencils, the rulers, the note paper, the Kleenex boxes, everything. Um, over time, that grew, and um, I, I think uh, it, a Reader's Digest version, uh, our small group, and I think the Hootons, if I recall, their small group, a couple of others joined in and grew that to something close to 150 backpacks in recent years uh, to help out Roundtree. 
uh, as well as Boyd, and I think there's a Title I school in Dallas we found, uh, uh, John Quincy Adams, I think it is. And so, but we've recently found some new opportunities, or I should say that uh, Woody has, uh, that uh, he's going to tell us about now so we can grow this thing. All right. So Woody, Woody uh, reached out to me back a few weeks ago and said, Matt, I've got an idea. I think it's an opportunity for us as a, as a church to, to, to do something. It's something our, our Connect group has been doing for a while, but I want it to be even bigger. And he said, can we talk? And I said, absolutely. Let's, let's, definitely, let's definitely talk about it. He said it has to do with backpacks and school supplies and, um, and serving kids in our community and those that are in need um, around us. And I said, let's happen. Let's make it happen. So, uh, Woody, share with me a little bit about what, what your vision is for this, what God placed on your heart and the challenge and the opportunity before us. Okay, thanks. Uh, so back in March when we were all trying to find uh, things to do for, in Collin County, it was brought to my attention that there was a place in Plano by the name of Minnie's Food Pantry. And I got in contact with them and went down there several times and watched what they did. And one of the things that impacted me the most was when I walked in and talked to them. Um, I had worked in some food pantries through my work through all over the country and I uh, saw what they did. Well, but when I went into Minis, they looked at me and said, look, let me tell you something. If you wouldn't eat this stuff, we're not going to give it to these people. And that was just very impactful because when you see what they do, um, it's incredible. So through that, uh, I found out that they had a back to school project. And last year, they probably gave 1,100 full uh, backpacks out, and I said, wow, okay, we, we do that. Um, and I made a comment to uh, Zoya, who's the CEO of Minis, and I said, oh yeah, I think we do 300 backpacks, so maybe I can get some of those to, uh, to bring down here to, uh, outside of the schools we did. So I went back to our small group, and, and Jay Fry and Susie Woods have been running this, or kind of coordinating this for a long time. I looked at Jay, I said, okay, I can committed that we'd give some of the 300 backpacks that we, uh, we do. Jay, with this frightful look on his face, looked at me and said, what do we do, 144? Um, and he said, I don't know what we can do, but he proceeded to go out and purchase some backpacks. He said, okay, now your job is to find somebody to fill the rest of these if you can. So I said, okay, sounds like a good deal, and uh, came to uh, Matt and thought that uh, if I just uh, advertise a little bit and promote it and you know convince people to uh, help us out, we can get to that 288 number. Um, and many is um, <clears throat> just if you're not involved, you just go to their website and it's an incredible, incredible. We went down there for our, uh, on a Saturday morning and just filled uh, boxes and they serve every morning. Uh, Wednesday through Saturday from 8 to 11, uh, people in the community that, that are, are needing some help. Um, and i uh, very excited that we're with that. But this is, this is, you know, to take the, you know, like Jay said this morning, it's pretty easy for 20 of us or so in a couple small groups to get to 144. So I have no, no doubt we'll get to our 288. And who knows, maybe I can uh, convince everybody and we'll maybe... I won't throw a number out there, Jay, it'll kill me. Uh, but uh, I'll just say I'm very confident that we can fulfill what uh, I've committed to minutes. Okay, so here's, what, here's the challenge before us. The backpack drive that we're starting today, we're launching this initiative today. It's going to go through July 31st, so the next three weeks. Uh, we've got a couple days beyond in the first week of August that we'll be getting all the supplies and backpacks put together and, and given over to, to minis to be distributed out to the kids and the families and the in, uh, in the communities. Um, Minis is a wonderful organization, as, as Woody said. If you're not familiar with them, I'd encourage you to learn more about the great work that they do in the community, servicing uh, Plano, Allen, and, and McKinney and, and surrounding areas. So they really are uh, a like-minded, like-spirited organization uh, like us. And so we're, I'm excited that we're going to be able to partner with them. But the challenge before us as a church is this, 288 backpacks. The backpacks have already been generously purchased and donated. Our job is to fill these backpacks um, with school supplies so that the kids, um, so that the kids around our community, especially the Title I schools, but even some of the other, 
schools. My daughter-in-law uh, teaches school in Plano, and it's not a Title I school, but uh, she shared with me on several occasions throughout the school year. Those of you that are teachers are familiar stories, and that is that there were always kids that didn't have something that they were supposed to. Um, mom and dad just couldn't afford it, or it just couldn't happen. And so the reality is there are kids throughout our community that are in need um, of additional supplies and resources to be able to have a successful school year. And so feeding them is one of the things we're going to do, but helping them be set up for success with school and moving forward in the education process is really important to us as well. So we've got 288 of these that we're going to fill with school supplies. There is a Google Docs document that is going to be sent out in a link in an email tomorrow, along with being in the e-journeys, the electronic newsletter over the next few weeks, plus the QR code will be around the building on all the posters, and you can find out exactly what those supplies are, and you can sign up to help bring these supplies. Now, here's the thing. We're doing the sign-up sheet because we need to bring certain supplies and specific amounts and quantities of these supplies. So please understand, we don't need you to just go buy whatever you think they might need. We need to make sure that we're doing it appropriately. So that is why there is a document that you'll sign up and say, I commit to bringing this and going and buying this and bringing it back up here to Greenville Oaks. At some point over the next few weeks, we'll have these barrels out again at the Faith at Home Center like we typically always do. And we'll, we'll start collecting. Now, if you don't have time to go to the store, we also want you to know that you can donate. Uh, you can, if you want to write a check, uh, put it in the memo line backpack drive. You can put it in any of, the, uh, any of the offering boxes around the worship center. If you want to donate cash, you can put it in an envelope, write backpack drive on it, drop it in the offering boxes. The office will process it and get it directed towards this particular project. Or you can go online to grivelokes.org and sign up there and uh, give through the online portal. And there's an actual line there that says backpack drive that you can make online donations as well. And to fill a backpack with all the supplies that the kids need, it's about $20, right? Okay, so about 20 bucks is going to fill one of, these supply, uh, one of these bags with the supplies they need. We got 288 of them to go. So we've got, we've got a task in front of us, but as Woody said, I am certain that we can accomplish this. And so the challenge before us is to step up and help serve some more kids in our community that are going to be in need here in the coming weeks as they get ready to start school uh, with, the, uh, with the appropriate and uh, proper school supplies. So let's fill a backpack over the next three weeks. Uh, be looking for the email. Be looking for the information about how you can sign up to bring supplies here to the church or make a monetary donation through one of those ways. And, uh, and then a group of people from Woody's group, I believe, will take the resources that are donated and go and buy supplies for you if you don't have time to, to do that. And together we're going we're gonna to help 288 kids or more or more, uh, be able to be properly resourced. We can always get more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is the challenge before us. Thank you so much for being a part of the food drive. And now let's keep it going. Let's continue to find ways to serve our community. But let me say this. Thank you guys. Just like um, the kids, I want you to know how much I appreciate the example that you're setting for us. Because this didn't start out with one of our ministers or one of our elders saying, hey, we should do a church thing. This was a group of people that said, we can make a difference. Let's start with our connect group and go from there. That's the spirit that we want to continue to perpetuate here in our church is that we are all called to love and serve and bless the people around us. So thank you for setting that example and for doing this and for giving us an opportunity to be a part of it. It's going to be fun. All right. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I really am. I'm excited about the fact that we are just continuing to be that church that I believe God has called us to be. We have an opportunity to truly go and be the church, and I hope that you will continue to accept this challenge and opportunity before us. So I'm going I'm to close with just a couple of, a couple of thoughts here. Um, in the book of Acts, there's a, little, there's a little moment, a little snapshot in the church in the first century that we get a chance to read about. I want to read it to you real quickly. In Acts chapter 4, verse 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. 
From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. So what if we actually lived out the words of Acts 4? I'm not saying that you should. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just asking a question. What if we actually tried to look more like the first century church? What if when we identified needs in our community, we responded? We filled in the gap. We helped provide for the needs in our community. What if we were like the first century church? All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. I'm not naive to understand that we don't live in the first century. We live in a very different world, a very different culture, a very different time in Collin County, Texas in 2022. But what if we tried to think like that? Or what if we actually tried to act a little more like that what if we worked really hard to recognize that what i have is not my own i don't know i didn't earn it i don't deserve it just what if our minds and our hearts shifted from how we view what we have with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the lord jesus and god's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them i love the picture that the writer paints of the mindset of the church of how the apostles were connecting the resurrection of jesus christ to the fact that there were no needy people among them So here's the challenge. What if we stopped giving out of our abundance? What if we stopped giving out of the extra, the overflow that we had? I don't need this. Yes, I'll, I'll, yes, you can have it. Or I've got three, you can have one. Or I really don't. What if we gave because of what our Savior gave for us? And we, in turn, have no choice but to share that with others? What if the story of the resurrected Savior was the reason we gave to help people in need? What if the powerful impact that Jesus Christ had on your life was the motivation for why you gave? Not because you have plenty, but because of what he's done for you. What if our response to the cross truly was loving others. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. If you did not come this morning ready to sell your house and give the proceeds to the church, there's always next Sunday. We have an opportunity, church, we have an incredible opportunity to be so much more than just a place where people gather to worship, to sing, to study, to talk, to be in relationship. There's nothing wrong with all those things. They're wonderful. They're biblical. We have an opportunity to go be the church, to love and serve and bless our community, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers. And I'm not so sure that we really have to be that different from the first century church 2,000 years ago. It's not by coincidence, it's not by accident that our vision is what it is as a church. 
God laid this before our leadership and it's called us to be a community of faith, a body of believers that desires to trade the pursuit of artificial success for the abundant life in Jesus. Church, we have been called to set aside what is not truly important, to give up what is not of God, and to wholly, fully, completely give ourselves to that which is the abundant life in Jesus Christ. And the values that we hold on to as a church are incredibly important. Loving first, combating isolation, equipping families, demonstrating selflessness, celebrating transformation. Do you see how they weave together this idea of giving of self? And just simply what if we allowed the incredible love and grace and mercy of Jesus Christ that we have been so incredibly blessed with to flow out of us and how we love and serve and bless those around us and especially those who are in need because there were no needy persons among them. The church made sure that everybody was taken care of. That's the opportunity we have to make an impact in our community and where we live. Pray with me, please. Father God, we're grateful. I'm grateful for this community of faith, for this body of believers here at Greenville Oaks, for each man and woman and child that makes up this church. God, I pray that you'll bless them in a special way today and in this week. And, and Father, I'm thankful for the food that sits here on this stage, and I pray that you'll bless the hands that will be giving it out, and for those that will be receiving it, that they will know that it is your love and your grace and your provision that is feeding them and providing them. And thank you for using us to help feed those that are hungry. And Father, I, I pray that you'll bless us with the opportunity to, to move forward in, in exciting ways with this backpack project and be a part of helping bless these kids and in our community that are in need of some help to ensure that they have the resources and supplies that they need uh, to do well in school and their education. And so God, I just pray that you will continue to challenge us with opportunities to be a church that is for our community that reflects your love and your grace and your mercy for us, for the world to see and truly know who you are. Father, we thank you for the one who makes it all possible. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you'll stand with me, please, we'll be, we'll be dismissed. One thing I want to remind you all of is that as we continue to work and serve on a daily basis, our community care ministry is an incredible ongoing ministry of this church. Just in the last two months, over 60 families have been helped with over $25,000 that we continue to help day in and day out. So these big initiatives and these big projects are wonderful, but it's not just a periodical initiative or a project. This is an ongoing desire and effort of our church to truly make an impact and a difference. And I'm so proud and so thankful to be a part of it. May we be a church that although we do not live in the first century, that sees our community and each other a little more like they did. And may everything we do, we do not because of who we are, but because of who he is in us. God bless you all. Have a great week. Guitar.